like to walk because it makes me think about good things. It makes me think about life that I'm still around. I sometimes I think about my past, what happened to me. He first told his story as Rex in the ABC's podcast, Trace. I ran away from home. Things weren't too good at home. But now he wants his voice loud and his name known. Robert Frizzick, the little guy who took on one of the most rich and powerful institutions. Just wanted the church hierarchy to be liability. What happened? Because they were hiding things. Robert filed a lawsuit against Melbourne's Catholic Archbishop, alleging sexual abuse by Father Anthony Bongiorno. He took my child all the way. He met Father Bongiorno in 1981, after seeking refuge at his local churchyard from problems at home. He came out and saw me and invited me in. He showed me where I could have a shower in his bedroom and I went to have a shower and he came in with me. And I did know it was right or wrong. It started washing me, yeah, all over my body. Robert was 11 years old. The abuse continued until he was 18. He said it was natural. When I was growing up, um, he used to say, I always just say to him, you know, why did you molest me? He goes, because he loved me. A number of social workers tried to sound the alarm. Ronnie Nettleton ran the boarding house where Robert was living in the 80s, where Father Bongiorno would visit. He would go with Robert into his bedroom and close the door. When Ronnie put a stop to that, Robert started disappearing at nights. I contacted Father Bongiorno and I said, you know, Robert's not coming home from school. Oh, yes, well, he calls in, you know, I'm supporting the family and he needs a father figure. So you took your concerns to Archbishop Frank Little. He more wanted to reassure us that Father Bongiorno was very well respected in his parish. He really had doubts about this sort of thing. A decade later, when Robert was in his 20s, he and two other young men took their allegations to police. Father Bongiorno was charged with indecent assault and sexual penetration of three boys, and he was committed to stand trial. Robert says he was ripped apart in the witness box and called a liar. He had two lawyers. They were hard. Trying to make it was my fault. The priest was acquitted. Robert went straight from court to the Westgate Bridge. Because I didn't want to live anymore. So, so I decided to go there. And what stopped you? So the police came. The police officer who rushed to his aid was Sol Solomon, the one who'd been fighting for him in court. I haven't spoken to him for a while. I love to. <laughs> so bringing back the memory is just about him. His anger at the church bubbled over in unhealthy ways. I sprayed paint on the Catholic Church. Uh, on the office. That's my way of getting them back. Until 2018, when he decided to lodge a civil claim in the Victorian Supreme Court. I thought to myself, yeah, I've got to fight him. I want them to admit the truth. I want them to change their ways, you know, for other survivors, just to keep fighting. The civil suit converged with other disturbing allegations against Father Bongiorno, who died in 2002. He was later named as a person of interest by police investigating the 1980 murder of Maria James. She was set to confront Father Bongiorno about the abuse of her son the day she was stabbed to death. At a fresh coronial inquest, Robert testified he once asked Father Bongiorno about the murder. It was just shocked. It just went into shock, sort of. So I found out about it. Meanwhile, his civil case was building momentum. 
is an incredible historian when it comes to the facts of his life and what happened. So even though he does have an intellectual disability, he is by no means a fool and he knows what's right and he knows what's wrong and he hasn't given up. As part of the case, documents were tendered as evidence that the church was warned about Father Bongiorno's behaviour as early as 1980. The principal of a Melbourne primary school wrote a letter that made its way here to the Archdiocese of Melbourne. The letter alleged that Father Anthony Bongiorno was regularly having boys stay with him overnight at the presbytery, that he asked a boy to kiss him, and that all the primary school staff were worried about the priest's behaviour. Despite learning of these allegations, the Archbishop at the time, Archbishop Frank Little, went on to appoint Father Bongiorno to two parishes within the year. A few days before the scheduled court hearing, the Archdiocese of Melbourne offered a settlement. The admission in this case is that um, Archbishop Frank Little had breached his duty of care in relation to the plaintiff. Robert's lawyer believes the $3.7 million payout in this case sets an important precedent. I think it makes it clear that the pendulum has well and truly swung in the favour of abuse survivors, but it also shows that you've got to fight for it. The Archdiocese of Melbourne has declined to comment. Thank you to everyone that stuck by me. Thank my family because I've been a pest to them over the years. Um, Victoria Police, my support people, that's what makes me happy. It's just good to be alive, yes. And that's what I'm trying to focus on at the moment. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.